In this Maya tutorial, I'm going to show you how to UV map this tennis ball. If you want to know how to model this tennis ball, please see the previous video linked in the description. If you notice in the outliner, I still have some of these sculpt options that are on here. I don't want to have this in my object history, so I'll select the object in object mode, and then I can delete the history. You can do this by going edit, delete by type history, or you can press Alt Shift D on a PC or Option Shift D on a Mac. Now you see that the outliner has less items and my history is much shorter. Next, let's change our workspace from modeling standard to UV editing. If I click on this, there will be a default UV. We can quickly change this default UV by selecting the UV toolkit. The UV toolkit should be available to you once you switch your workspace. If we go to the Create menu, we can click on Normal Based. This will replace the already generated UV map with this new one. Now we can use the 3D Cut and Sew tool to add in our cuts. To get to the UV Cut and Sew tool, click on the UV menu, then click 3D Cut and Sew UV tool. This is a great tool because we can use it over in this space. So I'm going to zoom in. And then I'm going to orbit around so I can see these UVs. I'm going to double click on this edge and it will go all the way around and automatically cut that UV. Now I can come in and orbit around and select this edge, double click, and it'll cut that UV. We can see that these cuts go all the way around the UV shell. Next, we can select the Q tool, go over to the UV editor side, right click, UV shell. Select all of our UV shells and then click Unfold. This will automatically unfold all of our pieces. Then we can go to Edge Mode and we can double click these edges. Once this center line of the UV is selected, then we can align them. So we can click Orient to Edges. This automatically straightens out the UV. Once again, we can double click this line and then we can Orient to Edges. This one will be horizontal, but that's fine. We can come up here, but make sure you right click UV shell, then click the shell again, then rotate it. So now that shell is also vertical. Let's align this one. So if I go click this UV shell, then right click, go back to edge mode, I can locate a central edge. So this edge here, from here to here, will be rather central. So I can double click those, then I can come down here and I can orient to edges. If we zoom out, we can see we didn't get the perfect center one. So that means we can reselect these here and then click orient to edges. So now that is very vertical. Next, we want to fit all of these inside the UV map. Drag select them. Then we can go to modify, normalize. Click on the box. You want to make sure that you are normalizing them collectively. And then we can preserve the aspect ratio. And then we apply. Now all these are normalized inside this space. Next, we can distribute them using the Arrange and Layout tool. If you look at this Distribute, it will default to everything being zero. Make sure you select the UV Shell tool, drag Select Everything, and then click Distribute. This will distribute them right next to each other, but you may want a little bit of space in between them. So it's nice to go ahead and add just a little bit of space. So then you can select everything again, distribute, and now you'll notice that there's a little space in between. Once again, we can select all the UVs, press W. This will select it in the middle, hold down the X key as we move to the left, and then this will snap them right into the middle. So now we have a perfectly centered UV shell. Although this one is still flipped, so we need to click on this shell, and then up in transform, we can just flip it. Now that everything is flipped in blue, we're ready to export our UV snapshot. So right click UV shell mode, drag select all the UVs that you want to export, then click the little camera icon. We want the image format to be Maya IFF, and you can click anti-alias lines. If you click this, the lines will have a dithering on them. If you don't, you'll have hard edge pixels. It depends on what you're doing. Then make sure you label it and then apply and close. We can then open this in Photoshop. 
When you open it in Photoshop, it will have a transparent layer if you've exported as an IFF. If you export it as a Targa, it will have a black background. Now we need to duplicate this layer. You can right click on the layer, then duplicate the layer. On this duplicate layer, we want to fill in the background so we can make a selection. Grab your paint bucket tool. By default, the paint bucket tool will have a tolerance of 32 and anti-alias checked. We don't want to have that. We want to uncheck anti-alias and then lower the tolerance to one. Then pick a color that you want for your background. I'll pick red so it's easy to see. And then we can paint bucket in all the background that is not the UVs. So here we've, so we've painted in all the UVs. And if I zoom in, you'll see why it was important to turn off anti-aliasing. If I didn't, it would try to blend in here and we would have a fill. So for example, let's undo that. And if I have anti-alias on and I have tolerance 32 and I fill, you can see that it fills in these edges. We don't necessarily want that to happen. Undo, change the tolerance, turn off anti-aliasing. And then if I zoom out, I can fill in all the pieces. Now I can make a selection of these edges. So if I grab the magic wand tool, and once again, it will default to a tolerance of 32 and anti-aliasing on, and it will have contiguous. So we can turn off contiguous, turn off anti-aliasing, lower the tolerance to one, and then if we just click, it'll select all the red pixels. We can go to select inverse, then we can make a new layer. On this new layer, let's grab the brush tool, select a color for our tennis ball. I'll pick this green color here. Then we can increase the size of our brush and we can paint in quickly the two tennis ball halves. We can change our color to white, zoom in. And then since we have this area selected, it will only paint over here. We can come down, continue painting the little stripe. Now everything is painted. We can hide our other two layers. And it's a good idea to save this as a Photoshop file in your source images, and then also save a texture file. So I'll go ahead and save both of those files. Then I will import the texture file into Maya. Now back in Maya, I'm going to right click, to go to object mode, select the tennis ball object. Then I will right click and assign a new material. I'm going to assign a blin. Once the blin is applied, I'll move over here to the end, select the blin. Then on color, I'll click this little checker box and I'll select file. I'll select the file folder icon. Then in source images, I have the tennis texture. I'll open that texture. We won't see anything unless I click over on this side and press six to see textures. Now I can see the tennis texture. I'm gonna go back to only the perspective view and go to the modeling standard workspace and close my outliner. Now we have a UV map of our tennis ball. 